Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Today we have a very interesting topic to discuss. How do we use nakshatras on a daily basis, right? Daily doesn't mean literally daily, but how do we use nakshatras frequently? How do we use them uh, for our day-to-day -day activities, you know, like or prominent activities? Okay. So there's a lot of talk on nakshatras these days and before also, but what people fail to understand is that every nakshatra has its story which plays out uniquely, differently for every person. So, for example, uh, let's take any nakshatra, for example. Which nakshatra should I take? <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you want me to discuss any particular nakshatra. But let's take the example of Uttar Falguni, right? We... I hope it's still Uttar Falguni. I don't know if Moon has transited to the next nakshatra, but when I was in the day, it Moon was in Uttar Falguni. So uh, let's talk of Uttar Falguni, right? So Uttar Falguni nakshatra has specific traits like you do you do some deals, negotiation, contract, and uh, you talk of partnerships. You talk of uh, responsibilities within partnerships. You also talk of uh, sharing things equally, right? But what will you share? <laughs> what what is that? Will you will you have a talk with your uh, father, maybe, or mother, or with your spouse, or with your business partner, or with your colleague, or with your boss, or with your subordinate? How do you find that, right? Well, that will individually depend on the horoscope and that will depend on your original chart and your dashas. Okay, Only then you can understand nakshatra. So, <clears throat> if you get confused in regards to how to use a nakshatra, so for example, you know, today moon uh, was in Uttar Falguni, well, then day before yesterday, I mean, yesterday, uh, it was in Purva Falguni, right? So then before that, it was in Magha. So that's the moon's nakshatra. But then we know Mercury is also transiting in a particular nakshatra, right? Venus is also transiting. Mars is also transiting. Every planet is transiting in some nakshatra or the other, right? And why do they say the moon nakshatra is very important? Because the moon represents the mind. So... What happens is when moon transits a particular nakshatra, you know what are the things that are going to happen because your mind is going to perceive those things. It's like, see, ultimately, if your mind does not catch something, that activity has, it is as good as, as if the thing has not happened or as bad as. <laughs> Why? Because your manas... Your mind, which is the experience of the reality, has not experienced it. So, what is the use of that event happening in your life? Or even if that doesn't happen, what's your gain or loss, right? It doesn't make any difference. But then we have sun's nakshatra also, right? So, sun can show things which generally the masses are interested in. Or something which is... Uh, which is certainly very important. Venus nakshatra can show things which are trendy, right? Suddenly something is the new trend, you know, it's like a fashion trend or something like that. Mercury can show technological trends, right? Jupiter can show trends uh, which people are actually optimistic and enthusiastic about. Or the other way around, they're, they're totally hopeless regarding that, right? Because Jupiter can either give you hopeful, uh, it can give you either hope or it can take away all the hope, right? So, <clears throat> depending on your horoscopes. Now, in your chart, originally, if you have prominent planets in a particular nakshatra, so let's take today's case, you know, suppose you have Uttar Falguni nakshatra prominent in your birth chart, which means either your sun, your lagna, your lagna lord, or your moon, or sometimes even the Atma Karaka is sitting in Uttar Falguni, or maybe more than one of them. So suppose your moon is in the ascendant, your ascendant and both moon are in the Uttar Falguni nakshatra. Okay. 
then your days when moon transits uttar falguni once in 27 days they become very important because if your moon is in uttar falguni and along with that your ascendant is also in uttar falguni then it means you are looking for partnerships okay now that's very generic now you may be looking for part looking into partnerships for a number of things right that again depends on your chart but in general that is the possibility that is where you might be heading right so therefore whenever moon transits uttar falguni it becomes very important because it's like your life purpose becomes activated suddenly now you may say oh does it mean every 27 days my life purpose is getting activated but i'm doing nothing in life no it doesn't mean that it means depending on your dashas and your horoscope you have a greater possibility for achieving your life purpose right and apart from that we also have the nakshatras of saturn right nakshatra of saturn rahu and ketu i mean okay now keeping aside the planets what you have to understand is that how now most important as i said how will you know that which trait of the nakshatra will play for me because there are nine planets and there is an ascendant so it is possible that you have 10 nakshatras right they are just uh, there you may not have two planets in a particular nakshatra and your ascendant may also be in different nakshatras compared to all nine so then you will have 10 different nakshatras right but after you see the nakshatras and the zodiac signs which is but natural because nakshatras are inside the zodiac signs now you got to see the houses the houses will decide the story okay <clears throat> so for example uh, if you have uttar falguni uttar falguni is falling in your second house for example right so that means if you have moon or sun or lagna lord in second house in uttar falguni what does this mean this means that you might be looking for partnerships but within your family right now suppose Uttar Falguni is there in your second house and your moon is placed. But who is the lord of Uttar Falguni? Sun is the lord, right? Now suppose sun is placed in the 6th, 8th or 12th. Then it means you might be cheated by some family member when you go through any partnership because the nakshatra lord is badly placed, right? Similarly, if Uttar Falguni is in your 10th house, supposedly you are a Scorpio Lagna, okay? So then what happens? Your moon is in the 10th house, right? Now, for Scorpio Lagna, moon is the 9th lord, right? So 9th lord is sitting in the 10th house, okay? So this means, you know, gurus, guides, counselors, profession, name, fame, these are all connected. Now, suppose the lord of your 10th house, which is Surya, is placed in Libra in the 12th house for a Scorpio Lagna, right? It's in a Dustana house and that to adding to that, it is in debility. And imagine it is afflicted by Mars and Saturn, just as you. So now this means that there might be somebody in your profession, some guru or guide who might uh, cause defamy to you. Or because of your association with them, you might run into a scandal, right? Because the Nakshatra Lord is badly placed and it's in debility which means your confidence is low because of that you are feeling hopeless and helpless and along with that you are also losing things because it's a dustana and that it's in debility which means you do not know how to come out of it the awareness is not there right the chitta is very low okay so that's how you know so now if you know that your ninth lot is in the tenth now you will say, oh, this is very big Raj Yoga, blah, 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 this, that. But if your 10th Lord, uh, now here uh, the 10th Lord becomes very important because Surya is not only the 10th Lord, he is also the Lord of Uttar Falcony. So it becomes double, triple important, you see, All right? So therefore, when you see that 
the nakshatras are connected to certain houses then you have to see what kind of a story will it play out okay so for example uh, if you are a fiery lagna right so if you are like aries leo or sagittarius then it it, it is very much possible that uttar falguni nakshatra will be in your trikonas right now what does this mean this means if you have a planet in uttar falguni now in the leo part of uttar falguni because uttar falguni stretches from leo and goes to virgo right we know that the first pada is in the sign of leo and then the second third fourth pada is in the sign of virgo but now assume that you have you know moon uh, in the uh, first pada of uttar falguni now this is not just moon in uttar falguni this is a moon in uttar falguni in trikona houses right so then this can uh, give you good connections in spiritual communities this can give you good connections in uh, places where you can learn certain things like university education and all this right if uttar falguni is connected to your earth house like second sixth tenth or eleventh eleventh also in this case because it's the house of gains although it's not an earth house then also then you can have gains in profession through networks network circles right as they say your net work is your net worth or something like that <laughs> or maybe i said the opposite nonetheless so you have to understand what the planets are doing now also it is important you see the overall chart because suppose you have uttar falguni which is there in your horoscope and there are many planets which are seated in uttar falguni but now what do you how do you decide what are they going to do then you have to see the lordships of these houses which houses are these planets ruling right so if suppose your seventh lord is in uttar falguni then the marriage and partnerships are very important for you right business partnerships also right if fifth lord is in uttar falguni you know partnerships with children and your subordinates can be very important ninth lord in uttar falguni partnerships with seniors very 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 important right <clears throat> so therefore once you know the persons involved and then you also have to check now suppose a person has seventh lord in uttar falguni now how will you know is it partnership with the husband or wife or is it some business partner how will you know that how well you have to see what is the potential for marriage in the chart if there is marriage or not if there is no marriage that means he is going on doing some partnerships with some business partner right not with his wife but if there are then if the second lord is well placed the seventh lord is well placed if the eleventh lord is well placed if the three corners are strong and our sun moon and ascendant are good then you know this person has a probability for marriage so then it is possible if venus is supporting then the seventh lord uh, in uttar falguni showing partnerships specifically with his wife and if it is related to the 10th house then both can do some business together and earn a lot of money and become famous by that right so that's how you actually study so you have to study the nakshatra study the uh, nature of the nakshatra the houses related to it the lordships and most importantly the dispositors the sign dispositors and also the nakshatra lords okay so the nakshatra lord also is very important so only then you can know what's happening in my life i mean just if you say okay today moon is in uttar falguni this will happen that will happen it, it's like assumptions you know maybe this or maybe that happens but suppose you have prominent planets in uttar falguni and you have a dasha of one of those planets antar dasha or pratyanta then you know that when now moon transits uttar falguni some event related to th that area of life is going to happen it will happen so suppose you have a prominent 10th house or a second house or sixth house along with the prominent uttar falguni so it could have happened that today you might have done some business deal or you got some promotion or maybe the dusthanas are active you might have got some defame or you lost your job so these are various possibilities right but 
you have to start with your horoscope. Your horoscope is the biggest secret to all your answers, right? If you know your chart, you know everything. If you don't, then there's not much use of studying transits or dashas, right? So I hope you will look at your chart, then your dashas, and then you see the stories of the nakshatras and the houses and the conjunctions and aspects. And only then you come to a conclusion, all right? Thank you very much for your patience uh, and your watch time. And if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation from me, the website is also down below in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him irrespective of which nakshatra your moon or sun or any planet is transiting. All right. Thank you.